the way we market, the way we approach our customers, the way that we really nourish that sales pipeline has to change. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, and my co-host, Beth Pompiklov, is not here, so I'm flying solo today, but I am so pumped about today's guest. We have an awesome guest who I've been friends with for a while now, who I've been really excited to have on the show. We've got Toby Bostwick, who's the VP of Product and Brand at Fortress Building Products on the show with us today. Toby, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Very excited, as you mentioned. Uh, very excited to be on the Venbio podcast. I, I watch it religiously, so I, I look forward to it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And Toby, you and I have gotten to know each other the last couple of years. And I really, I'm not just saying this because you're on the show. I really respect what you're doing and how you're building, but also how you, you know, how you lead your team, which I think we're going to talk a little about today. But, you know, for our listeners, if they don't know who you are, they don't know who Fortress Building Products is, can you give us just a, a 30,000 foot view of what you do and what you guys sell and who you guys market to sure. and things like that? Love to. I appreciate it, Zach. Uh, I'll start with Fortress. You know, where I work uh, is an important piece of, of who I am. Been at Fortress almost three years now. The number one thing about, you know, Fortress and why I really moved to Fortress was about the purpose that we serve. Yes, we are in building products. We, you know, manufacture steel, aluminum, composite, different building products in eight different categories. So I'll drop that plug in there. But more import importantly, it's about our purpose, right? And our purpose is leading global change in the way people build and live. And it's something that uh, is deep for me and that passion of really helping people uh, change what they do, how they live. So bringing solutions to the market. You know, at Fortress, we, um, we definitely bring solutions. That's what separates us from what I consider many in the, in the industry is not just trying to bring new products to market, but bring a solution. I know that's used a lot, but that's where we start. Um, you brought up, you know, how we're developing and leading the teams. And it's really starting with the solution in mind for the customer. Uh, and that's really about Fortress. Um, being there three years, it's been quick. Uh, I'm counting them in dog years, Zach. So they're going really fast. So it feels like 21 years as I look at it um, with everything that's happened in the last three years. Of course, it's been uh a lot of moving parts and pieces you know, at Fortress. So, so you got there in 2019, is that right? That's correct. August 2019. Yeah. So you thought like, oh, years. you know, things are normal, and then like six months in, the world gets turned upside down, right? It's a, it's amazing, right? It's like uh, my wife always says, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for punishment, right? In some way, shape, or, fo shape or form. And uh, when I started, it was like, oh, this is going to be smooth sailing. You know, Matt, you know, Sherstad, the owner of Fortress, was restructuring the business and um, great foundation of where we were going to go. I'm like, I got it, right? It's mapped out. And then all of a sudden, COVID hits right after Deck Expo of that year, and the whole world just changed. And mm -hmm. it really took a different perspective, a little bit on me, as you had asked. I've been in the industry for 20 years, you know, starting in 2002. From home building to uh, commercial construction, uh, product development focused all the way through, um, but you name it, one area of building products I've stayed in my entire career. And the last three years have been a very different, challenging, but also rewarding um, of really digging down, finding out who you are as you go through these last three years and excited to talk about it a little bit with you. Absolutely. So I think the thought and the idea that's on everybody's mind in building products right now is what do you think is going to happen? Like what, what's going to happen with building, with construction? Sure. I mean, like I read two different, I read two different articles today. Um, and this was about, this was about the cost of oil, which does impact building products. And Absolutely. once one was by Citigroup and one was by JP Morgan and J Citigroup was like, Hey, we project that oil is going to be $65 a barrel by end of year. And JP Morgan was saying, Hey, we think it's going to be close to $300 or something crazy right. like that. Don't quote me on the exact amount, but the reality is like nobody knows. And like that feels like what we've lived in for the last few years is that nobody really knows what's going on. And I think that's why we need stronger leadership now more than ever. And so what I, I want to talk to you about marketing because I love marketing, but I really want to understand is you being a leader of people, being a leader of a marketing organization and an organization that's gone through restructuring and you guys are at the front lines of what's happening in building products. I want to know, number one, like, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What do you, what do you all think? And how are you approaching this? And then secondarily, how does that translate to how you're leading your team? 
Absolutely. No, it's a good question. And, and if I get this right, then I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket right afterwards <laughs> as well. But, you know, it's so funny because, you know, it, hindsight's such a great teacher, you know, and I think what we've learned um, is going to help us as to what we're seeing to move forward. And what I mean by that is we got to be prepared in a different way, differently than we ever have before. And as you just articulated, right, you can have barrel at $300, you know, or uh, crude oil at $300 a barrel or, you know, $65. That's the world we live in right now. Mm -hmm. And if you read one article to another article, you're going to get a very different sentiment of what's, what's really happening. And, you know, for me, the way I look at the industry right now, um, in building products or in building materials and specifically to our area, um, we do have an insulation layer. And I believe that. I've seen it, right? I went through the 2007, 2008 coming out of home building, um, you know, saw what happened in going to an alternative, wood alternative material manufacturer. There is some insulation there, right? As people start to focus on their home, refocus where they spend their discretionary income, the long-term play is still a good investment in your house, Right. So those homeowners, there's still an investment there that, yes, the dust has to settle. Inflation is real. What we're going through right now is real. So an acknowledgement of the present is going to help us prepare for the future. But the investment in your home is still going to continue. And the same thing is true with businesses. Right. We got to keep going through with business. Um, and so whether it's your home or the business that you serve, you know, alternative building materials, you know, wood alternative materials like where I focus specifically, they still have a play. The sales cycle is going to change. And Zach, that's what I see being a little bit differently. So the way we market, the way we approach our customers, the way that we really nourish that sales pipeline has to change. And if we learned anything from last year is that you got to keep marketing, you got to keep developing, you got to keep nourishing that sales pipeline during the tough times, right? And the good times, right? So last year when orders were just coming in and coming in and coming in, how did we continue to, you know, nourish that pipeline? How did we continue to market, reach new customers and new opportunities? Um, so that's what I see in that near future right now is those people that are being creative, that don't give up, that don't get you know discouraged, continue to market, continue to push through, find those segments in the business where growth is still going to happen, but be patient with it. Got to be patient as we're going through this next six months to a year and really finding what I, I hate to say new normal, so I won't go for it. Man. <laughs> yeah, that new normal got just yeah. overused all the time, right? Um, but yeah, that's what I see. The opportunity is still there. There's an insulation with discretionary spend that in this industry will continue to be there. And I firmly believe that's going to continue over the next year. Won't be pretty. There's going to be downtimes. There's going to be slowdowns. Um, we face it now. Uh, many have in the industry. If you read some of the reports, any publicly traded companies or private companies, um, there's some tough times that people are going through right now. So I don't want to be, um, you know, I want to be empathetic to that and, and understand that there are tough times happening. Let me ask you this. When you think about Fortress's strategy, what, what, um, what percentage of your business is, res is renovation versus new construction? Sure. I mean, it's high. It's I mean, high. we're 90 plus, right? Um, you know, we get some of that uh, new construction in terms mm -hmm. of through our traditional steps, though, yeah. through our traditional two-step that help feed some of that. But it's going to be 90 plus is still in that R&R market. I think, and I'd love to get your, your take on this. I think r and is going to become even more important because if you think about it, there's a large portion of the United States, not if I go macro on you, and you but this is what I love is like, if you go, if you look at macro, a large portion of the United States has been locked into a 3% or even sub 3% mortgage, right? And so they're looking at like five and a half or six. And I mean, granted, depending upon when this podcast drops, it could, it could increase or decrease when you look at that mortgage rate. Sure. And so more or less, you know, it might, might be, you know, depending upon the, the percentage here, but there's going to be a percentage of people that are like, Hey, I'm not going to move right now because interest rates are so high. I'm good. I can't trade my current house for a, a better house without substantially increasing my, you know, my cost my monthly mortgage payment. And so I think, and I'd love to get your perspective. I think renovation is going to become even bigger than it has even over the last two years. Cause we saw renovation huge through COVID, but you're going to see as people were like, Hey, I want to move, but I can't, you know, I'm not going to right. increase my mortgage. I'm just going to go renovate. I'm going to make an addition. I'm going to renovate my kitchen. I'm going to do whatever it is to make my 
my house in an even better environment. Because you said this earlier, and I think this is something people forget is like we pre COVID, we looked at our home a lot of times, we justified buying it purely through the lens of what is that financial investment? Am I going to see return? But I think more and more people are also seeing, well, what's the, what's the emotional investment? What's the investment in my, in my family in having a space that's really built for us? You know, because we're Absolutely. spending more time at home. And so I'd be curious to get your your take as somebody who's really on yeah. the R&R side. Do you have the same sentiment or you're still waiting to see how, you know, things play I, out? I, I do. So it's an interesting way you put it because I'll speak personally, you know, um, whether luck plays into it or not. I mm-hmm. do think timing is everything right in life. Um, but also in the last year, when you bought a home is critical. As you just mm-hmm. pointed out, as interest rates continue to rise right now, it's tough. But those that are locked in at those lower interest rates, what we saw and what we're seeing across the country is that drove instant equity into that home. Bingo. Right. So now that spend is available, right? And as people start to tighten down a little bit and you see that you have that equity in your home, that makes the availability to do your backyard pergola or to put up a new fence or to renovate your kitchen, whatever the R&R is, um, it's, it's going to be there for those people that bought at that time, right? The sensitivity factor says, yeah, there's others on the flip side. So I want to be aware of that. But Zach, I agree with you. I think that will generate, that's that insulation we were talking about, or I brought up a little bit is on the fun, you know, on the upside in building products, you get that de- demand, right? And that supply is tight and that demand grows. But then when things start to slow down, you get the insulation of now I look at my home as an investment. I look at it as what I want to invest my money into because, you know, most people stay in their home seven years. As an example, seven years from now, we'll be back up on a swing, right? We've come out of this period in time that we're in. I'm staying away from the R word. Um, So, (laughs) you know, we're coming through this period of time and the GDP will change and all these things will start to change for us. And we'll have a different mindset as we look at five years from now when somebody goes to sell their house again. So, Putting in that new backyard is going to pay off. Putting in that new kitchen or that new bathroom, it will pay off. And that money is sitting there because of what we've seen over the last 18, 24 months in housing. Um, Where I live down here in Florida, you can't find a house. It is still at that point of where as soon as it comes on the market, it's a cash deal. It's the day of, and you got to be ready to buy. Sometimes at 5 to 10% over asking price just to get into a home. Um, now, it's a little bit tougher now when interest rates continue to climb, so it does slow that down a little bit. But I think having that equity line is going to be there. It's going to continue to boost the R&R side of, of the, the residential part of, of what we look at. If, if we shift and talk about marketing for, for a moment, I want, to, I want to get your take here, Toby, on you said this at the beginning about the importance of continuing to invest in marketing. Sure. But I, th- I, think, I think that's also, though, when you look at marketing, it's also an indicator of leadership and not to go too deep on you. But if you think about it, if you as an organization are saying, hey, we're going to continue to market through an upswing or through a downswing or whatever it might be, you're, what you're doing is you're reinforcing to your team how you feel or how you view the business. And so, I, yes, I want to hear how you're approaching your marketing and is your messaging at all to your audience changing. But I also want to hear from you what kind of things are you coaching and speaking into your team and how are you leading them through this giant question mark that is the current state of like society? Absolutely. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Something close to me and you know me well, Zach. So I'm a passionate person. Um, and when I look at it, I have to give credit where credit is due. You know, as I think about marketing, I had a mentor, uh, an industry pioneer really that told me a long time ago that, we need to do three things in this industry, especially in building products is number one, make a better and different product. Number two, be easy to do business with. And then number three, from a marketing side, you got to tell everybody about it. And if you do those three things really well, you're going to be successful, right? We're, we're not doing heart transplants. We're not, um, you know, changing the industry through scientific discovery and those things. We're bringing solutions to a need. And that's what we do in building products. And not to simplify how important that is, but if we concentrate on those things, as you ask about the marketing, you know, the messaging and the team conversation that we have is to speak to the customers, how they receive messages. And I know that sounds kind of odd, but customers now versus two years ago, before the pandemic, they're receiving marketing differently. 
right? Whether yeah. that be digitally, right? So through the structural side of it, digitally, online, on their you know phone, those things, that's one part. But how you talk to them is extremely different, right? How an architect looks at an opportunity now, it is different than how he looked or she looked at it two to three years ago. Same thing for a contractor, a deck builder, right? You're seeing changes in the market. So how we talk to them as a marketing department, as a product team, and as an innovation group, and those are the three areas, Zach, that I have the opportunity to lead, it is different than what we did three years ago. We can have you, to understand. Yeah, go ahead. Can you give me an example of that? Like, you know, brass tacks, like, hey, we spoke to this audience this way, and now we're, now we're fine. Shoot, this doesn't work anymore. Or it doesn't yeah, work as well. Very, very, very clearly. You know, with contractors, I'll give you a perfect example. We did a lot of push, right? Mm. Two to three years ago, we did a lot of push. So, hey, we've got this good idea. We've got this new railing. We've got a new fence. We've got a new frame. And it's a great innovation. You should buy it. <laughs> Take it. Hey, here you go. Yeah. You know, here's a display. Here's the samples and all those kind of things, which is great. I'm not downplaying that. But if that doesn't meet their specific market needs, right? And New England is different than the Southeast. Denver is different than the Bay Area in San Francisco, right? And, you know, if it rains in Seattle, doesn't mean it's raining down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we have customers in all those different places. That's just North America. Then you go to the UK, you go to Australia, you go to Ireland, you go to these different places and understanding that one contractor in one of those areas, absolutely, you cannot take this one size fits all approach anymore and think, well, I'm going to sell frame this way because this contractor in Denver, Colorado really, really likes it. He li he's an innovative person. He just wants to be at the leadership of driving new innovation. Well, that may be great for that contractor. So to specifically answer if I move to the Atlanta market where the pricing is different, the pressures are different, that contractor, they may need that conversion opportunity. So how do I get them to understand how to upsell from traditional treated wood to a steel frame? That messaging is completely different than if I'm leading with an innovation type story or if I'm leading with a conversion story. So being able to craft messages, whether it's through social media, is huge, Zach, the way that we've picked out who our influencer partners are or how we talk about our products now to those target markets is completely different than it was when we were doing that push. Now it's listen first and then create the pull through side. What are you using to listen? Is it just conversation? Or are you seeing things online specifically? So two areas, you, you hit on both of them, but I'll, I'll be a little bit more specific. Online is huge, right? Your chat rooms. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. If you jump on a Facebook, you know, contractor chat room, how much you learn, not only about manufacturers, but about what's working, what's not working. What am I feeling in my world? You know, we have contractors right now as we speak, Zach, that are still backed up three, four months. But we also have key contractors in this market that are starving for work because they're starting to see people pull back, back. and those $100,000 projects are no longer just there, right? Just, hey, write the, write the order and let's go. Customers, their customers are taking their time now. So on you know Facebook chats, I'll tell you one thing that has really picked up, social media, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, those types of things. Um, I love them all. I don't understand them completely. That's why I have people way smarter than me in the marketing department doing those things. But the feedback we get from those, priceless. People are real. And they, I think there's a sense of security. People kind of let down their guard a little bit when you're on Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I'll go through the comments on our Fortress Instagram. So many great questions or input. Hey, did you think about doing this? Did you think about you know us in our market? How, how can you get us product quicker? And you would have never known that if you weren't on those different channels where they feel comfortable conveying that type of messaging. The other side that, and I'll just be really clear, now more than ever talking to our customers, and I mean distributors, dealers, contractors, our home center partners, that quality time, right? Just like what our wives have always told us, got to spend that quality time, right? Quality with your time. Kids, with, you know, mm -hmm. that quality time and, and five minutes can be quality time. You know, one thing you ask about my coaching and some of the things that has really shown to be important with, with my team, and I got a great group. Um, you know, they get the benefit of that is that spending time with a contractor every week, 
So we'll start our Monday afternoon calls with a conversation. Number one, it's always about core values. Can't move away from that. And number two, it's about what contractors did you talk to this week? What did they say? You, you ask your marketing, you ask your marketing department that those questions. Oh yeah. Your product department. all So product product department, everyone has a, I'll call it an ultimatum, but there is a directive. We don't learn anything by just talking internally. As soon as you just talk internal, what we have found is you start making short-sighted decisions. And when you talk externally, you'll make long-term decisions. You'll make those decisions that are beneficial. And that's what we found talking with our contractors. Um, those customers that are putting money in the bank, right? Those that are paying the bills, those are, those are the people that are giving you the honest feedback. And that's where it really starts to come into your decision-making. Am I getting honest feedback from my distributor partners? Do I have a line of communication with my dealers? What's going out the door? What are they selling? What's not moving? What are we doing well? And the same thing, obviously, at the contractor level. So those three different levels and understanding their business is critical to being able to make good decisions on our side and, and understand our business. That's super smart. I, I love that you're tasking your team, regardless of whatever division that they're in, that they got to be talking to the customer because you're absolutely right. And we all see this. We've all, we've all you know, been, been guilty of this is if, if you're just talking to your internal team, your ideas become very insular. You know, you don't absolutely. have that outside perspective, but you said something a minute ago. I, I think it's, it, I want to get your take on Toby, which is, you're talking about those people that maybe they have a hundred thousand dollar project that they're seeing pullback. And the last two years for a lot of companies in building products, whether it's the trade or contractor builder, even manufacturers, if you look at that scale of fear and greed, it's been very much greed. It's like, Hey, I got more. I, I mean, I, I can't even make enough product to sell, you know? And now you're starting Absolutely. to see, like you said, that pullback. And so I think the biggest message that manufacturers and you push back against this, if you, if you disagree, but I think the biggest message that manufacturers are going to need to start to speak to is the, is the, is the greatest pain point that people are going to start to deal with, which is uncertainty is that these guys, they're like, Hey, I've, I've been really hot for a while now. Is it going to continue? Like uncertainty, I think is the biggest thing. It's more than like job flow. It's more than, you know, even finding someone to do the work or even finding product is the, it's the overall uncertainty of the times, because if there's anything that's happened over the last two years, I mean, three years now is that we live and I hate the term, but it's very uncertain and like things are changing so quickly. And I think that's why people are tired too. Like you were talking about this before we started Absolutely. recording. It's like, we're not tired because we're working so hard. We're tired because things are changing so much so quickly. Yeah. You no, know? you're hundred percent right. Y'all I'll, uh, directly answer your your question there in terms of, um, you know, contractors, as I told you, and this came directly from contractors, obviously won't use their names, um, but spent a lot of time with them last week, face to face. Um, we had a great, uh, a build off. I don't know if you probably heard about it, but, mm-hmm. but going on out in East Texas, and it was a great opportunity with many different manufacturers and building products to get together, um, but to have real conversations. And you'll see some that still have that backlog that's like, you know, I had this pipeline build up. I was, you know, six to seven months as far as my lead time last year, but now that's down to three. But I still have a good book of business, good order, you know, coming through. Um, but the flexibility is a word that I think every contractor right now um, is using all the time. And what I mean by that is they need to be flexible in having so many different projects open because you don't want to give that time for somebody to question. Ah, right. You want to be able to say, okay, Hey, let's move this forward. Let's do your initial investment. Um, you know, drawings are done. We've already moved forward because that hesitancy as you brought up is really starting to happen. Do I wait? Do I, should I, yeah. should I wait and see what happens? You know, my gas just went up to $5 a gallon or $6. I think maybe I should wait to spend this, you know, 40, 50, $60,000. So flexibility around scheduling, flexibility around having multiple projects going at once. I heard it time and time again last week. Uh, it's extremely important. But then understanding what makes you you as a contractor and a builder is extremely important, right? So your value that you bring to a homeowner is different than what it was last year, right? As you just brought up, brand loyalty, as an example, went right out the door last oh, yeah. year. But right. now, but now it's different. <laughs> Absolutely you know? is. Last year it was like, Hey, can you get my project on the books for this year? And now yeah. you're seeing like, you're seeing that the hesitation, that pullback. Um, Absolutely. 
Toby, this is really interesting. I mean, I, I feel like I could talk to you about this for hours, but I, I want to know if you're, if you're, let's say a manufacturer and you're listening to this and you're hearing you talk about how you're approaching the market, how you're tasking your team, how you're leading, like wh- sure. what's the one piece of advice that you would give them heading into the, the next six months next year? If you're saying, Hey, I, I want to be successful. I want to continue to grow. What would you tell them? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that. It's something that, you know, being in building products, it, it means something to me. It always has. I'll never leave this industry. And the reason why is because it's a people industry. And, you know, one thing that I always have, and I was taught um, a long time ago, and it's been successful for me in my career, is two things. And that is separating the, the fact that we manage a business and we lead people. And there's a big difference between how you manage a business and make those type of decisions and how you lead people. And from my perspective and talking with other people in the industry, right now is that critical time for leaders to lead. Um, And that is with your family at home, that's in your organizations close to home, but it's also with your team and at work and being able to truly lead in a different way than you led before the pandemic, before, you know, all the things broke out with COVID and supply chain and, you know, work from home. There was all those different things. And then during that time period, as we talked about earlier, you know, it's head down, you're really grinding, you're making those day to day, sometimes hour to hour decisions. As for my side, right, with a, with a global type manufacturing perspective, we were making minute to minute, hour to hour decisions sometimes. How, how tiring and is that? Like how exhausting? <laughs> It is a grind, right? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes there's a 12-hour time difference with some of our manufacturing partners, and you're you're making decisions around the clock. Um, you're making decisions when the supply chain, and you're looking at the different port closures that happen, or you're dealing with a a shutdown in a certain part of the country. It changes your approach day to day, hour to hour. And how you led during then towards now as things are starting to change, right? You're starting to see a little bit of softening on the supply chain. You're seeing, yes, there are some difficulties, kind of some new headwinds we're facing. But some of those things where, you know, steel prices, you know, we're all praying are starting to come down a little bit. Aluminum starting to come down a little bit. Freight, we're all praying that it starts to come down a little bit. You know, and as you see those things happening, now it's how do we lead coming out of this, how do we inspire? How do we really get our teams moving in that direction? And, um, you know, for, for me, and I hope you don't mind that I've always positioned myself in leading and I call it the four T's that I think is important with leadership. And that's truth, that's tools, that's training, and that's time. And what I mean by that is the truth is all about the transparency and the why, right? You hear everybody talking about understanding the why. Um, but it is so critical right now that we are transparent in what we're saying, how we're saying it, what we're conveying to our team. Um, and it's important as you're evaluating your team, right? So a part of leading people is also evaluating those people that you lead. That's part of the responsibility you have as a leader. So the first one being truth. The second one is the tools. Um, it, the tools is, do you give them the opportunity to do the job? whether it be you know a computer program that they have, but the tools to execute their job at the highest level and the potential to do those things. Uh, and then the last two are really all about, do they have the right tools? But then it's, do they have the right training? Are they trained correctly, right? Is the clear expectations, are their KPIs set where that training to do the job with the tools that you've given me, I can do that to the best of my ability. And then the last one is, is probably the most important and it may seem simple, but to me, it is the most important. Have you given them the time to execute? And did you communicate what that time was? So if you've told them the truth, if you've given them the tools, if you've given them the training that they need now, do they need three months? Do they need six months? Do they need a year in that seat doing that job? What's that cycle of time that they need to be successful? And the reason that I bring that up, right, we're talking about this great resignation and um, talking about all these different things. But If you can evaluate your people and what I've learned over the years, if I can say yes to those threes that I've, or those T's, I've given the truth, I've given the tools, I've given the training, then I'm given the time. And I still have somebody that maybe not doing what I need them to do. I may have a people problem. I may have the wrong person in the right, in, in that seat. I may have the wrong person on the bus. Maybe they need to move on. Right. And that's a responsibility of what we have as leaders now, but you gotta have a system in my opinion to, execute on that as a leader, as you're leading those people. That's great. Toby, this is 
awesome. And hats off to you for what you guys are building and how you're doing it. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> if someone wants to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Absolutely. Yeah. So th- the best way to get a hold of me, Zach, is through my email, uh, tobyb at fortressbp.com. So T-O-B-Y-B at fortressbp.com um, would be the quickest way to get a hold of me. Also, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I can definitely see LinkedIn being a very beneficial piece for um, how we continue to grow this industry, spe- specifically to building products. So either my email or um, look me up on LinkedIn. And then for Fortress, you can always jump on the fortressbp.com website um, and do on a contact me on there. And we can definitely, definitely touch base. It's been awesome. Toby, man, thank you so much for taking time to, to chat with us. This has been super helpful. Truly appreciate it, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.